I'll call to order the Harrisburg Area Transportation Study Coordinating Committee meeting for Friday, February 23rd, 2018. Uh, we'll begin with welcoming remarks. I want to say welcome to everybody. Uh, interesting weather we have out there. It looks like we have interesting weather to come. Only makes uh, those who maintain our roads and bridges their life a little more interesting. So, uh, my name is Jeff Haste from Dauphin County. We'll go around the table and start with Jim. Uh, Jim Hertzler, Cumberland County. Nathan Walker, PennDOT District 8. Adam Grimes, PennDOT Central Office. Larry Shiflett, PennDOT Central Office. Uh, Wayne Martin, City Harrisburg. Good morning, Skip Memmi, Dolphin County. Don Sanderson with DCED. <coughs> Rich Farcat. Steve Miller, Prairie County. Okay, and Myers, Prairie County Regional Planning Commission. Andrew Baumberger, Hats Planning Staff. Casey Baxendale, Hats Planning Staff. Steve Deck, Tri County Regional Planning Commission. Uh, good morning. William Peterson, Center for Community Building. PUC licensed transportation broker. Gene Chabak, AMP Engineering. Paul back to me, KCI. Along with Lofty, Dolphin County Economic Development. Good morning, Matt Boyer, Commuter Services, Pennsylvania. Uh, my name is Don Green. Marion Center, Naval Support Activity with NXP. BJ Sig, Senator Mike Regan's office. Lord from Madison City, Coach Barbara. John Fapoli, Senator John DeSantis' office. Ryan Stevens, Representative Cheryl Boyd. John Owen, I'm about to Okay, welcome. Uh, we'll begin with the coordinating committee uh, minutes from I December 5th. to do election of officers. Oh, I was hoping to get by that. <laughs> <laughs> the first uh, item of business for this new year's election of officers. Uh, are there any nominations? Skip. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to submit the existing officers remain, and that would be Jeff Haste, Steve Naylor, and Jim Hersler. Commissioner Haste as the chairman, Commissioner Naylor as the vice chairman, and Commissioner Hertzler as the secretary. Is there a second? Second. Are there any other nominations? Okay, I'll close the nominations. We've had a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, meeting minutes. Now we'll get to the coordinating committee meeting minutes of December 15th. Uh, we need to take an action to adopt those. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any corrections or anything in addition? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. We have the technical committee meeting minutes from February 9th. They're in your packet for information. We'll move into tip modifications and Adam. Yes. Thank you. Are there no amendments for committee votes? So I'll briefly highlight some of the modifications we have made to the hats tip since our last coordinating committee meeting in December. Uh, jumping right into actions four and six, that increases the right of way phase and adds the utility phase of the Mountain View Road Bridge replacement project in 2018 for a total of 30. $6,000. That increase is warranted to match current estimate. The state funding for the increase is available from the SD Bridge Reserve Line item. And the Mountain View Road Bridge is located on State Route 2003 over a tributary to Fishing Creek in Carroll Township. And that is scheduled for November 1st, let date. Action 7 and 8 increases the right of way phase for the Juniata Parkway Bridge replacement project by $29,371 of state 185 funding in 2018 and 2019. That increase is also to match most recent estimate and is available from the bridge reserve line item. That bridge is part of a supergroup A of bridges out of District 8 and is located in on state route 1015 over the tributary of Juniata River in Howe Township in Perry County. And last, actions 15 and 16 adds $10,000 to the right-of-way phase of the Pine Grove Road Department Force Bridge Replacement Project in 2018. Funding for that increase is available from the Department Force Culvert Line item, and that is a replacement on 233 over Beatham Hollow Run in Penn Township. Those are all modifications, so no votes necessary. If there are any questions, I'll take them at this time. Any questions for Adam? Okay. Uh, there's also an additional item that was handed out um, titled the Cat Area or Capital Area Transit Draft Tip Needs. So as part of our draft 
TIP developmental process between central office, the district, and Tri-County. It was agreed upon that we would no longer just keep 50% of CMAC for CAT. Instead, we wanted to add transparency, meaning CAT would put forth the items that they need to get, and then we, we would obtain approval from the coordinating committee to add those to the draft tip. So with that, that's what's in for, uh, front of you right now, and the needs for 2019 and 2020 as part of the draft tip program include CAT vehicles, service support, <coughs> and marketing. And you can see those totals at the, on the first chart, and below is the current balance of what's on the draft tip right now in terms of CMAC funding, and then also with the CAT needs and what the CMAC balance would be after funding those CAT needs. I'm not certain if Rich had anything else additional to add, but if we were to add these items, it would need a um, vote from this body. It, the, it's, those funds are essential to the operation as it's currently structured. Um, without them, uh, it would have a significant impact on the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, the, the importance of federal funds in, in the vehicle purchase is that, um, well, obviously you need the, the, the resources, but there are state resources that we could use potentially at 100%, but the local match, which goes back to the, the locals, is three and a third on 100% or three and a third on 20%. The federal funds co cover 80% of the cost, state funds 20%, local matches on, uh, on state dollars. So it's pretty important, I think, to the continuization that if we can to continue moving forward in the direction we had in the past. And if we take this action, what you're saying is for 19 and 20, those t we still have close to three and a half million left. Yeah, between 2019 and 2020, right. yes. Okay. And that this would be carved out on the draft tip, and once the tip would take effect on October 1st later this year, those funds would be essentially flexed to the transit tip then. Okay. Are there any further questions? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt the... Uh 2019 uh, draft tip needs for capital area transit. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thanks. Anything else, Adam? No, nope, that's it. Thank you. Okay, program and plan updates will go to the uh, HATS annual report. Steve? Yes. Uh, there's a couple copies of this that uh, Casey started passing around ahead of time. Hopefully most of you have had a chance to at least take a glance at it. Um, it, it is our annual report for this, this past year and basically provides a, a broad overview of the major initiatives, the UPWP, the TIP, our public participation efforts, uh, and the activities that, that we did from a planning side this year related to the freight plan. Um, and then project development. So it's basically intended to provide the general public uh, and other interested parties uh, the information of what we've been doing for the past year. So what we are looking for in terms of an action is to authorize the posting and distribution of the annual report for 2017. Any comments or questions? Okay, uh, we'll move on then. We have the 2018 to 20 UPW update. Can take, can take a motion on posting the annual report. Motion to post. Got it. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. All right, Diane. Thank you. Uh, in your packet is the Unified Planning Work Program for fiscal year 2018 to 2020. This would be starting this July. Uh, the, the format of the report has been changed uh, based on certification review comments, uh, but the basic information in there includes task descriptions of what our work will entail over the next two years, uh, specific tasks including pu public participation, condition management, intermodal management, data development, and, and TIP implementation. By the time this uh, 
work program goes into effect, the, our, our long-range plan will most likely be adopted. So we'll be focusing on implementation, uh, performance measures and targets so will be a, a focus area. Implementation of, of the environmental mitigation strategies and mobility needs that are that are defined in the RTP, and collaboration with MPOs and PennDOT in terms of the PennDOT Connects program, traffic incident management teams, and potential P3 opportunities. Um, in the second year of this work program, we'll be starting again uh, a, a tip update. So that is a recurring cycle, as we all know. So the total budget for this UPWP is $2.1 million over two years. And we've also requested some supplemental funding for a dedicated short-range communications deployment plan, working with the uh, planning partners in District 8 to coordinate some of the communications technologies that we'll be facing with the more automated vehicles and that, those kinds of technologies. We are also requesting CMAC funds Again, for Susquehanna Regional Transportation Partnership, their community services program, which is very successful, um, and those CMAC funds are also included. <coughs> At the end of the report is a budget summary on pages 20 and 21 for each of the years. Any questions? Any questions of Diane? Is there a motion to accept the plan? So moved. Your second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Mike Pett, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, at the last HATS meeting, we selected three projects for our TA set aside funds. There are the Pax Tang Parkway, <coughs> the downtown Hershey pedestrian improvements, and the Cumberland Valley Rail Trail Greeson project. Uh, we provided comments to PennDOT on the three, non, the three projects we didn't select from that application round. <coughs> Uh, that's the Upper Paxton Township Pedestrian Safety Improvements, uh, the State Route 230 Pedestrian Corridor and Stormwater Project, and the Dickinson College uh, Bicycle and Trail Project. Um, those all remain eligible for selection at the statewide round. I just spoke with Chris Metke yesterday, and they're still going through their evaluation process. We're very close. Okay. Um, our, we just held a uh, bike ped passenger task force meeting on Wednesday. Um, pretty much the entire meeting was spent talking about a major bike ped component for the upcoming RTP that you guys will see next at the April HATS meetings, our regional backbone. We're working to identify kind of the most important bike ped routes throughout the region that we can kind of use as, as, the, as the name would imply, a, a backbone of upon which we can kind of build the, the more local the local needs off of. So um, if anybody has any questions, be happy to answer them. If not, that's all I have. Uh, you know, just a, sort of an administrative. Larry, when they make the, the selection, how and who will you notify? Um, typically, they'll, I don't want to say there'll be a press release for these because it's federal. there's federal funds involved. There may be, but we would send an email out to Steve and staff um, to notify all of them. We do that statewide to all the planning organizations. I, I would just ask for additional planning we may have in the county. If you could, for the two that are in Dolphin, let me know. And for, I assume for the one in Cumberland, Jimmy would want to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. The municipalities are also, the, the project applicants the also. The sponsors also. Yeah, are also. Yeah, are the municipalities may get in the way. I'm just asking that we have the county so we can do planning yep. as well. So, okay. Sounds good. Got it. <laughs> All right, That's anything it. else? Thanks, Andrew. Uh, two, uh, 2019 tip update. Zach. Yeah, I can Nate. start off with that. Um, you provided a copy of the uh, draft tip in the packet. I'm just going to highlight a few things from the draft tip. Um, in uh, Cumberland County, <coughs> there are eight new bridge starts. And for the interstate program, we have the I-81 uh, Carlisle West project carrying forward. In the Dolphin County region, we have uh, 12 new bridge starts, and we're continuing to carry forward the Eisenhower Interchange and the uh, East Shore Section 3, which is from the South Bridge to the Eisenhower in Interchange. Uh, in Perry County, uh, kind of an anomaly this go around, there's 25 new bridge starts on Perry. The reason for that is we're looking at the 22 bridges, uh, 22, 322 bridges up through Perry for 
preservation work to line up with a resurfacing project. So that's uh, kind of the anomaly there because we're looking at all those bridges through that corridor. Uh, you also have a chart in front of you that I handed out. Um, it has a listing of the improvement types and the amount of funding associated with those improvement types. Uh, that miscellaneous line item that you see, that would be the line items on the program and any uh, funding that is in those line items. Uh, you can go down through and see all the different types of projects. Of course, we're heavy on the bridge side. Um, and this is just the HATS program. This is not the funding associated with the interstate program. And the chart right beside it is the funding broken down by the amount of funds towards each phase. With that, Casey, do you have anything you want to add? Or if you want a specific list of projects added, I can offer that up after this meeting. Yeah. Any other questions for me? Okay, we'll move into the uh, RTP update, Casey. Thank you. Um, two of our committees recently met at the end of January. It was our Alternative Modes Committee and our Mobility Committee, which looked at the disabled and elderly populations and their needs. Um, and we also distributed the flyer that we put in front of you at the last round of meetings to about 600 organizations and all 103 municipalities. Um, as far as we know, the municipalities have been doing a great job of posting them on their bulletin boards and in their buildings and in areas where the public can see them. Um, so if you see them around, give them a pat on the back, and if you don't see them around, make sure they, they put it up because we want to get the word out. If, if I could just add a couple of terms of getting the word out that we're undertaking the plan. She mentioned the flyer and that we directly sent it to almost a thousand uh, different entities. In addition to that, just the way today's public involvement goes, in the month of January, we posted the flyer on Twitter and got 3,351 views uh, in one month uh, related to that. And then same thing on LinkedIn, it got another 631 uh, views. So there's 4,000 people uh, that were made aware of the, of the planning effort and given the opportunity to participate through our website. And the only other thing I'll add is a kind of an unusual twist uh, to our outreach. We've had several meetings now with uh, Amish and Mennonite uh, peoples, and we're going to meet with them in each county, getting a lot of good information on the locations of their key facilities, what routes they primarily use, uh, issues they run into. So a uh, little different twist. Uh, it's been very informative, and they've been great and very appreciative uh, of the outreach. So. Just a few things. And then Thank also you. Perry County um, Chamber of Commerce and Credic both also put the flyer in its own email blast from both of those organizations. So it's getting distributed really well. Very good. Any questions or comments? All right, we'll move into project development and mm -hmm. Casey. Thank you. Um, in your packet, you'll find the project tracking table, and there is one new project ranked number 59 in Lower Allen Township, <coughs> Cumberland County. Um, it's the Lisburn Arcona intersection, um, and the existing intersection was noted as sharply skewed, poor alignment, and inadequate site distance, delays, and level of service deficiencies. Uh, an engineering study was conducted in conjunction with the adjacent development traffic volumes from planned developments nearby and from other areas which are generating significant pass through traffic. As part of the engineering study, alternatives considered included widening of turn lanes, realignment, traffic signalization, and a roundabout. The study ultimately identified construction of a single lane roundabout as a preferred alternative. PennDOT reviewed and approved the transportation engineering study in recommending the construction of a roundabout. And it has a cost estimate of $2.1 million. And then um, moving on from that, if there aren't any questions about that particular project. Um, is it the two roundabouts? This is a, a separate one from the one that was uh, put on the Ross, it was the Ross Moyne had one um, that the story was it was a $750,000 line item on the tip and it was removed and then it was put back on on this tip. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's Ross Moyne and Lisburn Roads. Uh, that, it's a project that had been on the tip, came off, came back on. Cost increases uh, from 750000 was the initial, initial allocation. It's at about $2 million. Uh, we had discussions with the uh, township and with PennDOT. 
and we kind of agreed that with the bringing it back onto the tip, that we would add another seven hundred and fifty thousand to it, which is basically half of the cost increase. The other half is being paid for by the private developer, and I believe the same. We're going to find the same case with this second roundabout. It's more directly associated with the development, and it will be paid for privately. The entire roundabout. That roundabout. Okay. Correct. And do they know that? Yes. Mm -hmm. We right. had had meetings with the township, and they had relayed that mm -hmm. to the developer. Okay. And then the other item underneath the project tracking table was the Shermansdale Park and Ride. Um, there was a discussion about um, turning lanes on Route 34 being a higher priority rather than the Shermansdale Park and Ride project that's currently on the tip and underway. Um, this was brought up to staff at the most recent Cumberland Perry Task Force meeting in January. Um, and they just wanted to make sure that I highlighted that in front of this body. You good with all that? <clears throat> yes, we had, I was at the meeting, Aaron, and uh, the uh, turn lanes, which were identified way back, like 15 years ago, <coughs> I think when that project started, I was on the uh, board back at that time. Uh, actually, they weren't on there. I asked for the turn lanes to be in there because i very familiar with that area. And uh, uh, I think the consensus was that the uh, Cumberland Prairie Task Force meeting that that is a priority over the park and ride there. And we talked about the uh, one up the road towards Mexico Corner. There's a intersection that should be addressed. Uh, Nate's familiar with that one. Uh, that we have more focus, possibly there, maybe for a part and ride. Uh, out of that discussion, I should say, and it's my thoughts, uh, the roundabout at 850 and uh, 34, if there's any possibility of moving that up, it's very really convoluted out there. and. Uh, uh, Initially, it was to be started this year, and it won't be let, let that till 2020, I believe, right? Yeah. Something like that there. So, uh, that's uh, probably the biggest or the largest uh, project that affects us greatly over there. So, uh, thank you. Okay, we'll move into PennDOT Connects. Thank you. Um, there have been nine PennDOT Connect meetings since the December MPO meetings. Um, the project initiation forms are distributed to all municipalities that have projects that are either on the current tip or on the upcoming draft tip. Um, if your municipality received one and they haven't reached out to either me or to District 8, um, should have let them know they should reach out to us if they have any questions or a meeting request um, as soon as possible so we can get it scheduled and get it moving. But that's it. Any questions? Okay, we'll move into uh, status reports. <coughs> Start with Penda. Okay, I'm, I'm going to cover some of the uh, construction po projects going on in the region. Um, the uh, 81 widening project uh, in Cumberland County. Uh, over the winter, the contractor is working on uh, grading the swales at the sound wall locations. And weather permitting, uh, they're going to uh, install traffic control devices and in mid-March they're looking to do start with base replacement and then uh, in early April start the milling and paving operations for that project and that's scheduled to be completed in by the end of May. Uh, the Erford Road Bridge project uh, this was a design build project that was let uh, back in back last two years ago, I think, or a year and a half ago. Um, the project is through design, and they're looking to start construction here in March. And right, in, right now we're working through some right-of-way issues, but still shooting for that March construction start. Um, the, overhead, <clears throat> the overhead bridges, uh, the US-222 bridge, uh, traffic, traffic was switched on the, the 20th this week uh, to the to a new configuration and work will continue with the bridge substructure construction with a goal to place new beams by April 1st. <coughs> the uh, two, 22 PA 39 intersection uh, <coughs> looks like we had some issues with erosion there so the contractor will be out there um, after after winter and they'll be working on uh, completing some work to take care of the erosion issues. 
Um, the, the merge lane project, right now there's nothing, the contractor isn't out there working, they will return to the site after after winter here in the spring. At that same intersection, is that where you No, this is the uh, the 81, the 81-83 merge lane okay. widening project out in Dolphin. Yeah. Um, and then the 283 reconstruction, uh, Hempt has installed uh, temporary shoring and foundations for overhead signs and have, in have installed the uh, temporary paving and the pipe replacement. They're looking to start the first long-term traffic pattern configuration on March 11th to work on the westbound side reconstruction. Um, that's all I have right now for construction updates. If you have questions, I can take them back and get you more information. Any questions of Nate? I just have one. Uh, the Orford Road uh, bridge construction, I know there's been a meeting, I guess, recently with municipal officials. But just refresh my memory on how we're going to deal with traffic during that construction. <coughs> uh, let me see if. <coughs> no, I. Well, you can. Not exactly. Yeah, I can go back. back to me. Yeah, I yeah. can get you the uh, traffic controls for that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Nate? No, no, no. Okay. I will move into other reports. I don't see anybody from the. Or is there a report from the State Transportation Commission or FHWA? Uh, we'll start with uh, Kat. Good morning. Good morning. Um, our recent uh, service realignment to our schedules will go into effect on March 5th. The public information will be made available. We're telling everybody Monday, but we think it's going to be by the close of business, so our website will be updated. The schedules are currently being printed as we speak and will be distributed hopefully this afternoon. So we're a little ahead of schedule, which is a good thing. Um, outside that, I'm still learning my way through the process, um, but uh, we're, we're moving forward. Good. Why don't you, since um, <coughs> this is being televised and folks are out there probably didn't learn, why don't you just give everybody an update on why you're here and how that will happen? <laughs> Hmm. Uh, <laughs> as briefly as I can, should I look at the camera or should I look at you? <laughs> this is really you know, for the, the viewing audience. Sure, sure. Um, uh, there, well, I don't know really, I mean, it's interesting. So there's a lot, there's been a lot of activity in the area on regionalization. Uh, I am, I wear the hat for uh, Rapid Transit, which is the Central Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, as well as um, now Capital Area Transit. Um, uh, Rabbit Transit has grown into a 10 county region and we have some experience in managing a, a regional transit system and with the need of management at CAT, we, the two transit boards have worked together and have a management agreement where I am also providing management services here at CAT. Um, so it, that began on February 1st and uh, we're already seeing some great synergies. Um, we're sharing software and resources and <coughs> backbone infrastructure um, safety programs. So I think, um, you know, outside of just the typical management, um, the two teams are coming together and providing a lot of synergy and, and ultimately we hope um, cost savings and improved service. So, good. Thanks. Yeah, I, I just want to take an opportunity to, to welcome Rich Farr uh, to the, for his first ads meeting, I believe. I am a voting member of this committee, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. All in favor? All in favor. Uh, I think, I think we're, we're all looking forward to, you know, improved efficiencies and uh, through the savings actually hope to be able to, to achieve improved transit service throughout the region. So, uh, welcome to the table here, Rich. Thank you. Okay, we can you continue on with partners? The next I see here, I believe, is SRTP. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Just uh, three big ticket items from our organization. Uh, in front of you, you have a program update that reflects a snapshot of our services and programs over the last six months. You're going to see some things in there about our dump the pump promotion as well as our tri transit promotion. Uh, one of the winners in the dump the pump was from Cumberland County, so a direct tie back to the Hatch region. Also a reference on the back of that about some national awards that two of our staffers received on a 40 under 40. Secondly, I've talked to you over the years about a Best Workplaces for Commuters program. Um, this is an old environmental protection agency program uh, that's moved from the federal government to the National Center for Transit Research down in Florida. 
two years ago we identified six businesses in and around our 13 county region that qualified for this national recognition. Uh, in February, two weeks ago, we announced seven additional uh, businesses in our 13 county region that qualified and met this stringent criteria. Uh, it's a, a recognition of employers who go the extra mile to accommodate their commuters that are coming in. So be it bike racks, be it showers, be it uh, discounted transit passes, be it anything related to a commute mode coming into their place of business other than driving by themselves, uh, goes, to, uh, goes towards a points count on this uh, checklist. Um, seven, again, Hollander Sleep Products here from Lancaster Labs, Comcast New York, County of Lancaster, Always Bagels and Lebanon, and you're all thinking, aren't there any from our region? Yes, there are, two. Ingram Micro from Dolphin County, as well as Fresh, Fresh Express from Dolphin County. Um, again, these are nationally uh, charted applications that these businesses take the time to work with our staff and put in. So to get that recognition is kind of a big thing for them, and they'll have that moving forward. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, the little wrap card that you have in front of you, and then those in the audience, and especially the legislators, if you need some, I'll make sure you get them. We launched, Community Services launched a brand new app on February 6th. I've talked to you over the years about our rideshare database that was always on a web-based platform. We had about 30,000 people in there that were looking for carpool matches. We have now become technologically savvy. We have an app so that on the old, on the old website when they went click and they went somewhere else click and they went somewhere else click and we lost them, that's done. Now you click, you put your name in, you click, you track your trip, you click on the app and you can, regain, you can gain rewards. It's set up on a simple premise that if you incentivize somebody for doing something, they're more or less likely to do it again. Uh, we're really looking to roll this out across 13 counties. We're targeting our transits because they're already on the bus. They simply need to download the app off of their um, Apple Store. They can track every transit trip they take. They can get points for that. We're just short of 100 local and regional retailers on that app right now that are already participating. We have boots on the ground, we're out with the mom and pops, the pizza shops, the local things that are going to be in your communities that might be more than um, something that you're familiar with. You might be willing to track your trips and then go ahead and collect those coupons or buy one, get one, or whatever they may be. There's raffles on there for, you can take your points and you can buy a raffle chance into a Dick's, sports, into a Dick's gift card, into a Smuggler's Notch vacation, things of that nature. This same platform is used nationally, both in Boston, Massachusetts and across the state of Connecticut on some of our other TDM programs that we run. So it's really been an effective tool. The thing that I can't underline enough is that this is a data collection service as much as it is a track your trip and reward service. Um, every trip that is tracked, we know the origin, we know the destination. We're going to be able to calculate on that platform the, the vehicle miles uh, that were removed. We can grab some emissions data from that. Uh, we'll be bringing data back to all of our MPO partners and counties saying, hey, these are the number of people that are tracking trips. This is the results of those trips. So it should be a, a useful tool uh, moving forward to make sure that you have some hard and fast numbers as to who's using it and what numbers we're getting out of it. A little more specific than what we may have had in the past. So absent any questions, I appreciate the opportunity to update and I'll let the meeting move along. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Do you see an orange? Sean? Thank you. Nothing. Okay. Uh, legislators. Okay. Senator Regan, DeSanto, show the loges off. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. None today. Okay. None today. Report. Thank you. Book report, City of Harrisburg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just uh, probably seen the bagged meter on Goodwill Drive. Uh, just an FYI, that's uh, being funded by a multimodal grant uh, as part of a um, highway occupancy permit by the developer. Uh, that signal is expected to go into service uh, May, June timeframe. And when that happens, Forrester Street, Goodwill, and Claude Nicholas Drive will operate in a, a clockwise one way traffic flows. Um, so when you're coming to the next meeting, just be aware of those traffic pattern changes uh, if, if it is in effect. The other thing, uh, Third Street Multimodal project is, is, was kicked off uh, in the fall and construction is intermittent with the weather, but it, it is ongoing and uh, we should maintain two, two lanes of traffic at all times except um, in the nighttime paving uh, later in the fall. But uh, that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Any questions, Wayne? Any other municipal reports or comments? Vice Mayor. We're still wondering when we're going to get on a list to get something done. Um, 
because of the 283 construction, we're getting a lot more truck traffic through town because people want to avoid anything between the Eisenhower interchange and um, the road into the airport. So they're coming through High Spire. And it's really wreaking havoc on our roads. And we, we really need to have something done. And you had said that you didn't know when or where we were on the list to be done, but that it was some years in advance. So you have any idea? No. The project the project's on the uh, the draft tip in uh, 2019, uh, so it will more than likely have a 2019 let date. In other words, we're in 2018 now. Yeah. You're saying that possibly something will be done next year? Potentially, yes. Potentially. Yeah. Is this being just um, putting asphalt on top of it, or are you going back to the infrastructure, going down to the concrete? Uh, that, you? That, that'll be up to the engineer engineers whenever they take a look at it, what type of reconstruction would be needed, or if it would just be a milling and paving. Okay. The, the one thing, and I don't know how this can be corrected, but where our drain sewers are on the main highway, it has sunk so much that people are hitting it. We've had accidents because people, people like myself who do, do the road all the time stay away from them. The people who don't do the road all the time, they hit it and take a small car that's, you know, potentially dangerous. So that is one thing. I don't know how that can be corrected. But um, that's one thing that needs to be looked at at the same time. So as of now, we're tentatively for 2019. Yes. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Any other municipal comments? Okay, uh, Tri County Regional Planning Commission. Thanks. Uh, we have five projects currently underway with the Regional Connections Program. They're all progressing. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> any questions of Diane? All right. Are there any comments or questions from the public? Any other items from the board? Just want to yeah. Know Go ahead. The um, there's like a five-page summary of Trump's infrastructure bill proposal in your packet. Um, just in case somebody's interested. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know if Steve or Jim would. NACO's actually been very good. Our National Association of County Officials is getting information out to us on that. So I don't know if you had a chance to see those. But if not, you can go to their website, go through them, pretty good briefing as well. And I thought, yes. Just one other quick thing. Um, <clears throat> peeking at the signature sheet as it went around, I don't want to single them out, but I do want to acknowledge that there were some folks here from the Navy. Uh, post in Mechanicsburg. Um, they didn't know I was going to stand up, but they allow us to come into their uh, fairs in November. They've been a nice partner. Um, talk about a star in and amongst the commuting public as far as van pools coming out of that facility. But we all try and get people out of single drive alone vehicles. They're dealing with hundreds of van pools in that facility that are really a plus to the congestion and removal in that area. So whether they want it or not, they are to be congratulated for pushing that program and allowing programs such as ours to come in and talk to their van poolers. Uh, if we can get them to track those miles that they're coming in and out of there, I think that would be a huge reflection on what's going on in that area and what would be going on if those van pools weren't operating in the area. Congratulations. Thank you. I missed it in my uh, construction update. Sure. Uh, we, we actually have a project on 83 in Cumberland that we just recently added to the interstate maintenance program. It's in the new Cumberland area. So, you know, the, the last about a year and a half ago, we had the uh, the interchange improvement there. Uh, there's a so short section there in New Cumberland between uh, another part that was resurfaced that it's going to button up those ends and between the South Bridge and the interchange, a short section there that we're buttoning up. So it's being added to the program for about 4.3 on the interstate program, 4.3 million. And when will that work be done? Uh, it won't be done until 2019. The project's going to be let here early okay. this year, but no work will start until next year. Okay. Anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meaning adjourned.